So, uh, what I want you to do is mm -hmm. write code to take the derivative of a polynomial. OK. Um, so I remember that. I don't okay. remember if a polynomial allows terms to have negative exponents or not. Um, great question. Let's assume that they are all positive. OK. Let's assume that. Non-negative. Non-negative, yes. Right. OK, yes. great. Um, so how is the polynomial presented to us? Excellent question. Um, I will let you assume that it's taken in whatever format you'd like. OK, sure. So all right. you probably don't want to make it a string unless you want to do a lot of string parsing. Right. I'm so, thinking maybe in a, a uh, I was thinking an array initially. Um, I, th I still think an array would work okay. where the value at index i is the, is the coefficient on the term with exponent i. Okay. So this array would be 2 at index 0, 5 at index 1, and 3 at index 2. So this two. would be an array that basically looks like? 2, comma 5, comma 3. Uh, or 3, yeah. Uh, Sorry, you're yeah. doing the opposite way. Yeah. Right. 2, comma 5, comma 3. Right. OK. All right. So what, what might be a pros and cons of this versus a diff, or what other approaches can you think of, and why would you go with this one or a sure. different one? Um, well, I was thinking this because uh, we know that for each exponent term, um, the only thing that identifies a polynomial uniquely is its coefficient. Mm -hmm. So it's very efficient in terms of, in term, in terms of size. Um, so that's, uh, you know, this provides all the information uh -huh. that we need about that polynomial compactly. Um, and we're going to need to iterate through every value, through every coefficient regardless. So we don't really care about um, efficiency in looking up one mm -hmm. coefficient or another. Um, I mean, I suppose you could also have another hash map uh, from from uh, exponent to coefficient. So this would be a map containing the key value pairs 0, 2, 1, 5, 2, 3, and so on. Um, one advantage to that may be that you may have a po polynomial where you have many terms of large degree, but then you also have many zero terms. Mm -hmm. um, so in the array, like you, you have, have yeah, three x to the one hundred. Exactly. In the right. So for the array, you would need a hundred entries. Many of them would be zero and just taking up space. Whereas for the map, you just need a, a key value pair for each uh, term that's present, each non-zero term. So the key. Okay. Okay, so one approach is you have an array. Mm -hmm. Another approach is you have a key value pair. Where's, what is the key the exponent? The key is the exponent. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other approaches you can think of? Um, hmm. I mean, I suppose each, you, you could make a little struct or a little object called term that uh, contains two numbers, mm -hmm. uh, the coefficient and the exponent. Okay. And then you could just have a set of terms. Okay. Um, and maybe that would allow users to input polynomials that weren't simplified. So maybe at the end you have a plus x squared, mm -hmm. um, which wouldn't suit. You'd have to simplify it yourself, or you wouldn't. You, you wouldn't be able to send that into an array if okay. you had an extra like term. Um, so okay. So that one allows. So we have sort of our three approaches. Right. One is an array. Mm -hmm. Like uh, two, five, three. Right. And then the next one is a hash map where we have like zero um, to two, map to two. And then one to five. And then one to two five. To three. And two to three. Right. And the third one is an array of structs. Yeah. So what what a sort of okay or so this a set one of structs or yeah yeah yeah, whatever. yeah. some sort of list. just some collection yeah okay so one pro here you mentioned is more um, flexibility mm -hmm. what might be some of the other pros of this approach um, in terms of like time or space or cons of time and space right so you have the adva the same advantage um, as you did with the hash map where you won't need an entry for zero terms. Mm -hmm. Um, and then one disadvantage is that you don't know if your structs are going to be in sorted order by exponent, mm -hmm. which you see with the polynomial yeah. and you'd have with the array. Um, so that makes it a little more, you'd have to sort it yourself um, to then compute the derivative yeah. efficiently. So 
that would be a major drawback. Okay. And I think one additional advantage here is just the clarity mm -hmm. of using a struct. And it's just sure. someone else is reading your code and it's a little bit clear what's right. going on. When you know that a term is right. Yeah. Precisely okay. what the numbers so are. So how about sure. um, we write the code and let's, let's go with this third approach here. Okay, sure. The array of structs and okay. we can erase this stuff. Okay. We might need to go onto the other board, but let's try to work with just one. Okay. Um, so can I assume that no two structs in the array will have the same exponent? No. I can't assume that. Okay, sure. But you can handle that however you wish. Sure. It may not actually impact your code at all. Right. That's true. Okay. Now, do I have to return the result in the most simplified form? Do so, I have to combine like terms? Um, let's say no. Okay. Let's say, yeah, I'll make it a little bit easier okay. on you. Great. <laughs> That's a much harder